First of all, I mean, as we know, the World Health Organization just de de declared this a, a global health virus emergency. Is spreading rapidly in China, and U.S. officials are very worried that it could come here. From COVID-19. Tonight, extreme measures to contain the virus. In Wuhan, spraying disinfectant More on buildings and cars. More breaking point coronavirus as a coronavirus case. pandemic hits new highs. Hi, my name is Liv. My name is Sophia Zane. Hi, my name is Nazi Meal. Uh, I'm playing Big Mike in the play in Sight. Hi, my name is Maylin. Hi, my name is Joshua Packard. Hi, my name is Yannick Bundick, and I will be playing the role of Daniela in the play Sight. Hi, my name is Nico Snyder. And it, COVID may drag on in, a, in various ways for years, I mean, no idea. So to try and make art out of something that we don't entirely understand seems premature, I would say, you know? So far, like I have been unable to mold my definition of theater to any version of what this is, which is part of the reason that I'm excited to do this because I'm hoping that y'all are gonna help me sort of redefine that a little bit for myself there. Yeah. The script that you guys are getting. Oh, excuse me. Um, it feels like they have a history. I definitely knew your dad. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even at some point in your childhood, it seems like I might have. Yeah, I mean, you have a name, you pick up on that. Yeah, Daniel. It seems like Pops definitely knew both him and his family, like, even the before time. Yeah. So it feels like, yeah. He's probably a friend of the family. Evo. Got a screen. Yeah, a screen, but it also doesn't have to have a screen. Like... It could just be projected onto a wall or in the air. In the air? It's... Well, you played a game before, right? Like hide-and-go-seek. Sure. When you were five. I heard that. Standing right here. This is just... It's hard. It's like you don't have a, a frame of reference for it, because you've never seen it. There was no frame of reference for Don't Mars. Don't turn around for him unless he actually stopped. Make sense? Okay. Unless you really feel like, well, all right, then you can turn around. So, Eva, he's not going to turn around for you unless you get him. You got you to get him right now. Go for it. Junior? Oh, Pops, I didn't hear you come up. Still so jumpy. What's so much to do? So much to consider. I'm sure in one moment I'm going to slip through my hands. The whole thing. Well, as far as in person versus online, I would say the biggest difference for me is just like, first of all, like how hands on I, my, I usually get. And then also um, the rehearsal process, I feel like is the, the biggest difference um, because it's not like I can, as like the stage trainer, I can't like chase kids down in the building because they're not here. Um, and so getting, making sure that people like actually come to the rehearsal and getting everything done, it's a lot more stressful, um, cause it's not as simple as just being like, Hey, actually come to class and do this. Um, and I also usually when I'm in the like in-person productions, I'm doing like 87 different things at once. Um, and now I'm still kind of doing that, but it's a lot less. It's, it's more like 47 different things at once. Mm -hmm. 
uh, say in person is a lot more fun because you get to interact with people versus when it's online you're literally just staring at a computer screen and recording yourself um this has been you know very different because like you know like i I don't know, you know, throughout remote learning, when it comes to like, you know, learning lines, that has been very different because, you know, in person is all about, you know, you need to know about heart. You can't have it on stage. So like, you know, doing it remote, it has been sort of easy not to like worry about lines so much because everything is always in your face. You can always just have it there. So that's been like pretty interesting, especially now that the play is animated. That makes it even more weird that I'm just like using my voice and not like I'm actually like acting like in person you, you have to be more like aware of your castmates and your surroundings and your relationship with them and how you interact with them and how you interact with the stage and your how your voice projects into the room you have to worry about so much more with in person but an online production since the online production we're doing is just like vocal it's easier because i could just make sure my emotion is caught in my tone i think you also have more um idea of what you're doing because you can actually see see the production uh but online it's it, it, it's kind of um, messy, but over time, I think everyone will start to understand it. But yeah, doing online shows is a bit um, new, so it's not, not the My best. My experience right has been kind of rough only because during the pandemic, it's been hard for me to balance my time and also being in the comfort of my home. But um, it's been all right, but not as smooth as I would like it to be. Well, in, per in person production, it's a lot easier to create a community and really like um, energize and motivate the production itself and want to continue it. It can be a lot hard um, because, you know, you're relying on only yourself when it's um, online. Like, you know, it's not just right after school. Yeah. It's, um, you know, it's Friday and you don't have school and you have to get up from bed. It's like a, it's a different kind of commitment. If anything, it just kind of streamlines streamlines everything because I am a fan of like using a lot of these digital resources because um, it's a lot of times faster and so it's it's very streamlined in terms of like my organization and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but also, as the person that's doing all the art for the show, um, getting through the the hurdle of like making physical art for a digital medium and kind of figure out how that works and how that plays. And then also like the scanning process and all of that has been kind of challenging and interesting. Uh, but overall, I'm just really excited to like really flex both my organizational and creative muscles kind of at the same time. Mm -hmm. Basically, like when there's no human interaction, I just feel Am I talking to myself or am I creating art? Right. Like your that. abilities as an actor. Um, I would say, you know, it has been like a little bit hard to, you know, really like fill the character or, you know, fill like my scene partner because like we're over Zoom or or just talking through the camera instead of, you know, actually being in person with that per with that person. So it has been like really challenging. And what made you want to push? Oh, can't do a lot of stuff that I used to do. Like, I can't 
express the character's feelings through my face, which is a big part in theater. Like I can't, I can't really express myself how I want to. It just has to be through my voice. And it's just like, I guess it would challenge me as an actor because it's just different. Like it's kind of weird to think about. Cause all it stuff- makes it difficult to audition for different roles and like uh, in, in shows and in different types of um, uh, television television series. Uh, it kind of um, ruins the whole acting business because um, yeah, there's just no roles because of COVID, and the only work that you would probably get is for um, animation. Like, no, it showed me that my love for theater was so strong that I would continue to do it no matter if it got shut down or not. So that's one thing that it definitely challenged me for. Um, well, I'm someone that's trying to work more on, you know, like uh, becoming more comfortable in my body, like standing while acting and moving around and not just being like a stick and stuff. So this kind of just encourages the habit of sitting there and reading your lines and, you know, obviously putting in the effort, um, but it's just a bad habit of mine. No, like I admire like my mom, but did not not really for the, the theater <laughs> stuff. Um, I you know probably I would have to say Mr. Gray if I if I had to pick somebody just because um, he has really helped me get more into this um, and like develop my abilities and also lets me cry in the black box a lot. So that's fun. That's very sweet. <laughs> It, it is. He 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 lets me cry in black box all the time. He's like, it's okay to cry. I'm putting this in there because please do. People need to know how sweet he is. Characters He's in the so movies, sweet. but I know she sang "Reflection" in Mulan, mm-hmm. and and she also sang "A Whole New World" in Aladdin, and she's I don't know if she's Asian or Asian American, but I know she's Asian, mm-hmm. and. Back when she was like doing these performing stuff, a lot of Asian Americans were like, people don't really allow Asian Americans to perform. And but she didn't care. She still did what she loved and she was amazing. And that is inspiring because as an Asian American, I do I too feel that um, I have less opportunities, but seeing someone like her is like, she's like a role model. Right now is really Billy Porter who like really inspires me because like he has this, this ability to, you know, put himself inside these different characters that he has played and, you know, he shows so much growth through like, for example, like his show Pose, like, you know, seeing him from like season one to like season three now, he has like really grown as an actor for me so that's that's someone who i really admire as just as a person and also you know as a um, artist so yeah and what do you challenge yourself to bring to rehearsals as an actor um you know i try miss coon um yes i i admire miss coon very very much and she she really is like the reason why I want to stick with this, like, I want to stick with acting, because, I don't know, if it wasn't for her and her, like, dedication to her students, like, the dedication she puts in us to be, like, better actors, I don't think I would want to do this anymore. And she's so, like, whimsical and truthful and... Like, I don't know, she's like my dream person. Like, if I could be like anybody in another lifetime, I'd be like that. I would have to say that 
I admire Robin Williams the most because he's such a great actor and I love all his movies. He's just so hilarious. Taraji P. Henson, um, she has played so many different roles and as a black woman and like her success and her achievements, they really, you know, make me want to continue to chase my dreams. I have so many people listed. I just can't choose one now. <laughs> of course I can't choose one now. I don't want to say like cliche Timothy Chalamet. I know he's like, everyone loves him and stuff, but I really admire him as an actor because he, um, he grew up in the city. He's from Hell's Kitchen. He went to LaGuardia. So I like feel very similar to him. And he kind of inspires me and like, if he can do it and we're from the same place, then I can do it. Yeah, I definitely want to go into professional tech theater, whether that's like stage management or lighting or whatever. I just, I want to keep doing it. It's really fun. And I hate nine to fives so much. Definitely. Oh yeah, that that's something like I really, really want to do. Um, I like film, but theater is just, it's live, it's in person. It's just, it's so much better. So, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, maybe, yeah. Um, but more of the television series and movies but yeah i'll definitely do uh uh shows yes it is yeah definitely but i'm more into on screen i don't i don't like this i can't keep doing like the in-person stuff but it has helped me in terms of like really honing in on the, um, the, I guess like the best way to put it is like the management of things because it's not so much about the, the, um, the, it's, I mean, it's about the experience, but in a different way than it is in live theater where the primary person that you're doing it for is yourselves in the audience because this is kind of like something that you're doing for yourselves and also takes a lot more planning and like time management and just making sure that everybody's on their stuff. It helped me by teaching me that no matter what situation you're in, you can still do what you love. Um, theater is not, this experience has helped me because, you know, you learn that theater is not just, you know, being on stage and you know performing in front of a crowd theater is you know it's very it's a very wide spectrum you can do it in so many different ways that thankfully anthrocyte has taught me is that you know it can be it can be voice recorded it can you know sometimes just having the script in your hand it, it's so many different elements that i never knew that theater could be because of this so, yeah and if the audience could it has helped me because it kind of like makes me realize there's not only one thing I could do in pursuing theater like look into being a voice actor stuff and I don't know it just shows me that like there's more there's more roles here than you could think of this experience has helped me realize that um no matter what the world is going through and no matter how they change the form of theater that I would always try to put myself in it or participate in it somehow. And if the audience could walk away with- Okay, um, I guess it's like gotten me more comfortable with being on camera, definitely. Um, and having to just, you know, like be comfortable on screen, looking at yourself um, and also ignoring that and still acting.
to take care of the planet probably is one of them uh because our show is a lot about the 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 apocalypse but like in an eco way not in like a zombies way Mm -hmm. um and just to remember to take care of each other and also that like hey the arts are still here and high schoolers aren't all terrible we don't all suck very true very true um so how do you balance online school and now an online production um well i guess be yourself follow your dreams and i don't know about a third that's totally fine um how do you balance online school and an online production If you know you want to say something to someone, don't wait. Don't wait till where it's later and, you know, that person is dying or is about to leave because then you're going to always regret that mistake. You know, I can one thing say that about my character. Um, something I'll always say is, you know, family is always important. That's that's something that, you know, you have to rely on. You know, your family will always be there for you no matter what, hopefully. And, you know cherish every moment that you have with people and um <laughs> live life no for real live life um don't take anything for granted and always be true to yourself I want them to walk away you said three things, right? Yeah. The first thing, um, always, always have uh, um, those people that you call family. Blood or not, always have those people that you call family and hold them close to your heart. The second thing, um, always find joy, peace, and happiness in the little moments in your life. Because those are the things that you should be most grateful for. And those are the things that will get you through it. And three... Always be yourself, no matter what's going on in your life. Um, reassessing dynamics that they have, um, relationships. Um, you know, like enjoying your community, whatever that may be, fandom, um, ethnicity, just area, any type of community. Um, another one would be um, appreciate the the little things of just being able to be in person mm. like that's that was taken for granted and we've all learned that lesson. um I just, it's all production. (laughs) I mean, like, I go to classes and stuff, but a lot of the times there's no actual meetings and teachers just post things, and I have always been able to get stuff done super fast. And so for me, I spend the majority of my time thinking about the production, especially now. um, I only have, like, two classes where we're still doing things. Um, So a lot of it is very much just like, all right, we're making sure that I have a blank Google Classroom, and then I'm going to do all this production stuff and do all this art or then the schedule or you know this that and the third right and um with everything i feel like the way i I don't really do much for the online production i mean i have a few lines but it's not that much Mm -hmm. you know online school it has been you know tough this entire school year um i i I can't wait to be back in person again for school because it's just this dynamic has been like you know it has been fun, but then it also has been like, I, I can't wait for this to be over. So luckily, this play has not been that so much time consuming where it's like, I, I'm not really having to worry about balancing the two. So like, thankfully, I'm, I'm glad about that. Because if this was in person, that, that has been a challenge sometimes dealing with rehearsal in school. Honestly, and Mr. Gray is very, very 
very, very lenient. So, like, I can miss, I can miss a rehearsal because I'm doing schoolwork and he wouldn't mind because he knows like at school and online school is crazy. So he'll just tell us to tell him in advance and then he'll reschedule. So it's very easy to keep them both at the same time. Um, I just balance it by, um, uh, by keeping the schedule of my actual curriculum and, um, and I have another schedule of my, um, acting, acting schedule. So I can, focus on either curriculum or acting whenever I want, which is really easy for me. Um, I just create so many schedules and alarm clocks that go off all day to just help me keep myself organized. So that's how I've been about. Um, well, for me, academics hasn't been like a, a huge struggle. I'm, I definitely am um, I'm very, uh, I guess, focused on it. I, um, I put a lot of effort into it, um, but for school production i always make um i always make sure that i've completed my work prior to um so i'm not you know sidetracked or distracted um so i think it's just like a half it's a time management thing for me Given the situation and being who I am, knowing that um, Asian Americans and LGBT people aren't barely get any representation in theater, I want to be a role model for future generations because I know there are a lot of aspiring actors and actresses that only have white actors and actresses to be role models. My castmates and just the work itself, like, you know, the sharing that stage with, you know, people and and they're there, they're there because of the same reason as you just brings me so much joy. Success. I want to be successful, so I'm going to be the best that I can be. Which is me would be, um, uh, really just meeting new people, uh, being different characters. I just love to be someone new. Um, yeah, and, and just acting. Um, I love it. My brothers push me to be a better actress. Like, when I look at them, I just want to um, show them that no matter where they are in life, no matter how old they are, they can do what they love and what makes their heart happy. So they push me to be a better actress every um, day. My cast members, they push me to be a better actors, better, better actress. Um, and also Mr. Gray, just like seeing how passionate he is about it, um, inspires me to get to the point where I just like, I, I need to be doing it all the time. So much. I've had so many panic attacks in this building and at my house and just been like, Mr. Gray, guess what happened? I had another one. <laughs> um, or just, you know, having that support there. And it, online school sucks, um, especially because I thrive on structure and that kind of just rips all the structure away. Mm -hmm. um, so I was glad to get back in the building, but just having him as like a familiar face and also just to be like, Look at this cool thing I did. Uh, it's really cool. Well, Mr. Gray is really patient and understanding. And I feel like I can talk to him about anything. Um, Mr. Gray has like, I've, I've been working with Mr. Gray since my freshman year on just, you know, on what was, on, on lighting for um, Is He Dead? So, you know, just being with him since my freshman year. So now my senior year, it just, it's so amazing that like he has really like helped me out so much, especially with this play and you know 
bringing introducing me to this type of theater so like i thank him so much for just the hard work he has done for this play Ooh, having mr grant as teacher really helps because he's just so chill and laid back but he also like keeps you focused like he'll if you need more time he'll give you more time but he'll also like remind you like just get it done like you can do it just get it done and then he's just very like chill like no fuss oh he was great he helped so many cast members he helped um me uh with a monologue which gave me some sh which gave me some uh, trouble but it, he was just amazing during these um during these tough times he helped everyone and made everyone feel um like we're not in this alone. mr gay is one of those teachers i got to have him twice throughout my high school career so thank god for him and um he's very attentive when it comes to his students and he's always looking out for me and he's just amazing oh my god um he's so amazing he's a very genuine and kind person like that is easy to tell he's very like he's easy to talk to and um he's you can you feel comfortable around him and that's really helpful because the entire thing of acting is like uh getting out of your comfort zone and maybe doing things that embarrass you or that you just like feel stupid doing um and he supports it he yeah. encourages it and it's uh it's really comforting I don't know necessarily what it means, but it's it's a collective experience and it kind of embodies a lot of my ideas about just like taking care of each other and being a good person regardless of like what you look like or even honestly a lot of the times how you act is like just to be a good human and take care of people and like stand up for what's wrong and theater a lot of the times allows for like that to really be the communal mindset um, well, when I first started theater, it was just having fun and learning at the same time. But now theater is like creating a family with people that aren't biological family. Um, I think of, like, I always love to say this. I say it a lot in my, in my essays that I did for college, you know, I feel like, you know, as artists, we are like, you know, this this like gatekeeper for people we bring them we bring them to the theater to tell these stories about real people and and they trust us to to deliver that and you know sometimes that's the best part about theater is that someone in the audience might connect to that character that we're playing and you know that helps them out just just a tiny bit for however long the show is so that that's the one thing i can say everything everything theater means everything to me like i don't know i just feel like without theater life would be super boring like really and truly and i think that especially in my life like i wouldn't know who i was if i didn't have theater like everything i want to do is about theater so i just i would be really lost for me theater means to to be brave in my way because you're going on stage and memorizing all your lines in front of this huge audience which should be kind of stressful for you mm -hmm. um yeah just have that courage to to look at everyone and just keep on saying your lines and even if you mess up just continue and um because they won't even know and the showbiz is the showbiz. Thank yeah, you. sorry. To me, theater means doing crazy things to entertain people and to make people feel things that they never felt before. Mm, I think theater, in a lot of ways, is like uh, just like a f way, different way to express myself. You know, there's fashion, there's the way I speak. Um, 
but it's expressing my creative side in a more of like a physical way that I really enjoy, like having to dive in. I guess so, so yeah, expression and definitely like a form of therapy almost. Like uh, it can be like really therapeutic. So my first question is, what is it like having to change how you do productions from in-person to virtual? Um, what is it like? Hard. Uh, it's really different. It's a lot more difficult. Um, it's funny because there's a lot of like the same problems that we deal with, like, you know, kids not being able to make it to a rehearsal at the last minute or something like that, having to work around schedules. Um, it is, it's, it's really weird not being in the space together. Like I, I still, the biggest struggle that I have is I, every time we start rehearsal, I don't really know how to start. Yeah. Because we can't circle up and like, you know, breathe and pass the clap around and do all of the things that we know how to do. Um, so it, it's been really different. So do you yeah. do like other warm ups and stuff since we can't do stuff in person? Um, yeah, I mean, I do a lot of, like, just sort of mindfulness stuff, but it's very much stuff that you can only kind of do in your own space, um, so things like breathing exercises and stuff like that. Um, I mean, it's also different because, like, we're not acting with our bodies this time around. Yeah. We're really only using our voices, so it, it's a whole other type of warm-up. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just, it's been very different and yeah. very hard. Uh, so my second question is, how do you try to keep the believability of the scenes while it's virtual uh that's funny um we actually were just working on on something with that today um a big part of that i think is like figuring out how to find ways to do exactly what you would do in person but virtually um so for example we were doing a scene today where evo had to sneak up on jacob mm -hmm. And Jacob's reaction was never real because he's literally sitting there staring at the screen looking at Evo. And so finally I said, all right, Jacob, you're going to stand up and I want you to turn your back to the camera. And don't turn around until Evo actually gets your attention. Yeah. Um, and when Evo did, like, it, it, it played so much more believably and realistically. So part of it is you almost have to just sort of figure out how to, like, do exactly what you would do in person, but then, you know kind of make it work with this screen between us yeah that makes sense. um so is it harder to be there for your students during a time like this where you would normally have talks after school or if they're going through something they can come talk to you in person yeah 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 absolutely i mean i think it's so much harder because you know when the kids are in front of you I mean, you know this, Solaris. You've yeah. been in my class. Like, you walk in, I know I know if something's going on. All I have to do is look at you. You don't have to say anything. You walk in first period with your bagel, and you're <laughs> sitting there eating it sadly, and I'm like, Solaris had a tough morning. Okay, yeah. what's going on? Let's chat, right? Mm. Um, when we're remote, like, I don't get to see that, unless mm. you're willing to turn on your camera, which, as we all know, <laughs> don't want to do. Yeah. So... It, it kind of what it does is it really it puts the onus back on the students um and my hope is as hard as this year has been i hope that a lot of kids have learned like how to ask for help yeah. because there's the only way that i know if something is wrong is if you ask for help now and i think that's true of like every teacher you know it's sort of forced you guys to figure out how to be more proactive and to like reach out to us yeah um and it's definitely been the same thing with, you know, recording and doing this play is that stuff comes up and it's like, oh, yeah, they're not here. They're not in front of me, yeah. you know. Um, and so sometimes it's there's a delay in even getting the message. We don't get it until way later. So, yeah, a lot harder. I mean, there is a lot of downsides, but if you could name some like benefits or some upsides that you've noticed why you've been doing the production, what would they be? Hmm. I mean... I think the biggest upside is like creativity. Like we have to be creative. You know, yeah. if you had told me two years ago, Mr. Gray, we want you to direct a show, but you're gonna record everyone's voices and then you're gonna like uh, uh, illustrate the rest like a comic book. I would be like, no, <laughs> 
Yeah. Absolutely not. That sounds miserable. I would want nothing to do with that. And here I am, and I'm, I'm very much enjoying this process, and a lot of it has just sort of been like, well, how do we do this? How do we figure this out? There's no roadmap for this. There's no examples. There's no anything to look at. It's just figure it out, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think in that regard, so like it's, it's been really, really cool because there's been so much creativity. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's like the big thing. Yeah, I want to hold on to is just you know that creative problem solving and that like it's so easy. I feel like in in drama when you're trying to come up with a solution to something, it's be like ah, oh, but that won't work because of X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there's something about this whole thing with COVID where like don't get to say something doesn't work. Yeah, you just you have to be like, well, figure it out, make it work. Yeah. Um, and so that's been kind of cool, I guess. So what main yeah. elements do you want to incorporate into this production? What unique elements? Yeah, like what are the main elements that we would get out of the play? Um, voice, illustrations, um, a lot of sound design, obviously. Um, you know, that's just sort of like the technical elements, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, if you're talking about more like thematic elements and yeah. things like that, um, Yeah, I, I think the thing that I would want people to take away from it, because this is a play that it really, it very much reflects, I think, the reality that we're in, not in terms of like what's actually happening, but in terms of how we've all felt for the last year. Like this is a world where the sun is dying and it feels like the world is ending and there's no hope and everything is just like sad and darkness. And mm. like, I think a lot of us have been feeling that way. Yeah for the last year and a half. Um, but what I really find beautiful about this play is that like the world is ending and all that's happening, but then like people are still falling in love in this play. You know, people are still trying to grow a garden. People are still like committing themselves to like, I am a mother and I will raise my child. Um, that to me is like the most beautiful thing, right? And it's, yeah. it's why most of us became teachers is because we're we're excited about like the next generation and what they're gonna do um and i think more so than ever now like it's been harder to be a teacher than ever because obviously if you care about the kids like your heart is breaking right now for all of you guys and what you're going through but it's also so inspiring yeah. because like Solaris, if you can get through this and decide like oh i'm gonna make a documentary too through this whole process like you can get through anything yeah there's nothing in the world that is gonna like someday you're gonna be like 26 and you're gonna hit some <laughs> obstacle and you're gonna be like whatever it's not covid this is nothing yeah so that i think has been like weirdly inspiring i guess i hope that the audience is gonna kind of feel some sense of that too that in 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 a world in the state that it's in a bunch of students decided to make this we yeah about to see so, I mean, like, how do you reassure your students and keep them motivated when it pretty much feels like the world is kind of falling apart at their feet, you know? Yeah. Um, honesty. That's my big policy, is be honest with them. Like, when I feel like the world's falling apart, I don't go in and, you know, you've had me in class. I'm incapable of being the teacher who's like, hi, guys. <laughs> welcome to drama class right like no like i'm i'm mr gray i had a bad morning this morning i'm kind of pissed off how are you guys doing right yeah like and i think being honest with students is important because like i don't want them to feel patronized but then also part of that honesty is like i have to be an optimist i have to think that the glass is is half full because i'm also a student of history like i really love history and like read any history they've people thought the world was ending for 2000 years. Yeah. Every time anything happens, we think that the world is ending and the world is, is never really ending. It's just always changing. And is it changing for the better? I don't know. It, it doesn't always feel like it right now, but yeah. then, then you ask me a question like that and I'm like, we're going to be fine. Yeah. Solaris for president. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, 
what if you could ask three things from your cast members to bring to rehearsals or to any scene what would they be three things yeah um uh do they have to be like like physical things no 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 okay cool um focus focus is obviously one always um and i actually i'll say that a better way presence um it has never been easier to like check out in conversations than it is now yeah um and like you know i people are like oh, i can't have my camera on because i i you know i don't look good today or i got whatever and i'm like okay i believe like most of you and i also know that like at least a couple of you out there are like you've got me on your laptop and you're like playing video games on the <laughs> side or you're like watching tv or something right yeah because like it's just so easy now to be like here are my responsibilities distractions or distractions or yeah. whatever um you can't make a play like that like you have to be present together that's a lot easier when you're in the room the only distraction that you really have is we all have our phones but you know i can yell at you and we get back on stage mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's been like one of the biggest things like be present show up and show up um when you're with us you know turn your phone over put it away and make sure that you're like here with us mm -hmm. um commitment and not just like commitment to the schedule but like commitment to their characters in terms of like you know um there's some scenes in this play that are violent that are extreme that are intense and i'm challenging my actors to be like we haven't recorded them yet but i'm like yeah you should make sure that your parents know because when we record them you're gonna need to like scream <laughs> and like you're gonna need to like hide in the closet and start being like ah and like I don't want you to freak your parents out, but like we have to commit to what this show needs. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think the other thing is just, and this is something that is, it's rarely, it's rarely lacking at Brooklyn Arts, but it's also sometimes forgotten, which is passion. Like, you're here for a reason. You didn't come to Brooklyn Arts because you were like, let me try this. Like, you're here because you said for four years you're going to make a commitment to an art form to try to be an artist, to try to grow your skills. So don't show up to rehearsal where you're it's like, this is the show, it's time to do your thing. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm tired, I don't really want to do it. Like, no, if, if you're here, right, bring your passion, bring the thing that made you want to come to this school. Yeah. So second to last question, because it's one I always wondered, how does like teacher great, is, how is he different from like play, you know, production great? How, how are they two different? Um. That is a good question that you should ask some of the students who are in the cast. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel like they are different. Um, I think the biggest difference is, you know, teacher gray is a little bit more like, okay, here's the lesson. We're here to do this lesson. Then we're going to see what you guys come up with. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, I don't, I don't really have a plan when I go into a rehearsal, you know, like I know what scene we're rehearsing that day. I usually read it a few times beforehand just to kind of have an idea of like, what are the moments I want to make sure that we're hitting, but really more like my job is to be the audience and, and to see what you all bring me. Right. And I'm going to give you notes and throw stuff back to you. But I think ultimately what I've loved about, doing this project about having remote learning about school in general is that like you guys give me a place where I don't have to focus on my mental health um and I can just sort of focus on on you guys because I'm very good I feel like at being there for my students and yeah. doing what I need to do um but yeah I mean my own mental health is like I don't know a better way to say it than uh I look at it as like, that is, that is my job, right? It's all part of my job because at the end of the day, my job is to be there for you guys and your mental health. I can't do that if I'm trying to pour from an empty cup and my own mental health isn't taken care of. Right. So, you know, that's why, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly in and out of it, but I was in therapy until about December and I'm getting back into therapy again. Right. I talk to friends. I have my own support systems. There's also little things like, and I know it probably annoys some students, but like, I don't answer emails on weekends. Yeah. You know, like, sorry, deal with it. You can send me all the emails you want. I just, my weekends are like, I'll see it go off on my phone and I'll be like, nope, Monday. You know, I just, you have to set those boundaries where you need them. Um, 
But I think at the end of the day, like, I, I guess I just, I just do it because I have to, because mm-hmm. if I don't do it, then it's not really me who suffers. It, it's all of you. Right. So, because then, then you don't have like Mr. Gray here to, to be your Mr. Gray. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Of course. did the first sketches on just a regular sketchbook paper and with a pencil um, and most of the time what I ended up doing is during our first couple of read-throughs and rehearsals of each of the scenes I would make these character sketches um, as the people were acting so that I could kind of get a vibe and kind of get what these characters looked like because the thing with anthracite that's different than a lot of other shows that you would be doing art for is that um first of all it's voice acting so what the actor looks like doesn't necessarily mean that the character has to look like that and then also it's an original play and so there's not like a previous cast or designs to kind of go off of so you just have what comes from you and so what i wanted to do was get a vibe for these characters as they were being portrayed so my original initial sketches um i just did on sketchbook paper um as I was kind of getting a vibe for them and then I moved to the black and white which is what the final show is going to be in um and uh most of these were I was able to do like a pencil sketch and then go over that with the white paint pen and it worked out fine a couple of them I had to redraw because there were some minor issues like originally doc was going to have a beard and then it didn't really translate well to the white um or little mike almost had a mullet at one point that also didn't quite look right um but yeah so there was some minor changes that just happened because of the transferring to a different kind of a style but overall it mostly was like figure out who this person is and then go ahead and do a headshot for them and then eventually as i start moving into actually drawing and working on the the main bulk of the show i'm gonna use those headshots as kind of a reference to the character so i'm like okay this is what so and so looks like um and i don't have to constantly be guessing plus it's gonna look really cool because in the credits we're planning on doing